Part 3, Example Ammunition. Now we're going to talk about so this piece called Ammunition that I actually completed back in 2009. We'll just make sure it's straight on the easel first before we talk about it. Kind of level it out. Yeah, that's pretty close. Okay, so um, this piece is called Ammunition. One sec. This piece is called Ammunition. It was completed in 2009. Currently, it needs a little bit of retouching. I, I retouched kind of the edges because uh, you could see the it, it's a masonite board. You could see the masonite board was getting chipped and the paint was coming off the edges. Um, so I went back and I fixed it up with some black paint. But now you can tell like the two blacks that I used were a little bit different because this is shinier and this is like more matte. And for whatever reason, like, yeah, for whatever reason, the blacks were different. So now you can kind of pick up on that. And I, that really bugs me because it's not supposed to look like that. It's just supposed to look like, like at this angle with the lighting as it is, you can really tell the, uh, the blacks are different. So I'm going to have to go back and just coat everything with black where it's supposed to be black so that nobody will be able to tell that I uh, ever retouched it. Um, so yeah, this, this piece is called ammunition. Um, and like the idea of like silence is ammunition or silence as ammunition to uh, basically war crimes. I could read you the whole spiel about the context of this painting, but I'm not going to do that right now. Um, but yeah, it's called ammunition. Um, the words up there, the word up there says silence. It's in white. So first thing we can talk about color again. Color, it's quite striking. Uh, it's abstract coloration. Lots of complementary colors. Complementary colors. I won't talk about that right now, but. Lots of complementary colors, so there's a lot of contrast. Um, and that's highlighted by like these sections of different color, right? Um, instead of having it be smooth transitions of colors, it's stark, like here's a section, here's a section, here's a section, here's a section. So the color is quite striking. Color is one of the biggest... Um, components of this composition one of the most important um yeah one of the most important comp components of this composition and uh i think largely why it is ex as successful as it is is because of the color uh, and the use of color uh talking about use of line the lines or like the geometric like sectioning of this piece of painting or this painting uh, again is done intentionally and it draws focus to like this area here where this figure's hand is holding um, the AK-47 gun um, again here kind of there's like this big curve here and that kind of leads back to the face and the facial expression and then this kind of leads up here which kind of takes you to like look at this text here. And that's how line is kind of utilized in this design. Um, there's not a lot of texture per se. You could say there's a little bit of texturing with the way that the red is painted in. And like, I guess also with the face, adds a little bit of detailing, adds a little bit of um, visual interest to these areas. So instead of being flat, like a flat color or flat, gradient or transition of color um you've got textured color and again kind of textured color with more um uh impressionistic kind of painterly kind of uh rendering there you got some texture in here dry brushing technique um that all adds interest and then draws your attention to it shape Again, rectangular shapes, lots of rectangular shapes. Or like these two big rectangular shapes. They're almost like crosshairs, really, hey? Uh, value. We're going to talk about 
So the neck here is quite dark. The inside of the mouth is quite dark. This side of the face is darker than this side of the face. That's more color, but more to do with the color, but like value wise. Blues, dark blues are generally darker value than like a light orange or a light yellow. Uh, there's unity in terms of just the way that things are painted in there. There's unity with the black background. And there's a balance in the sense of, um, like the figure is kind of leaning this way, right? But the, the, the object that the figure is holding, the gun, is leaning this way. So there's kind of like, you've got two different leans here, right? You've got one leaning this way, one leaning this way. But it all kind of is balanced. Like, V-shapes are balanced. Triangles are balanced. Um, yeah, so that's this painting. Oops. That's this painting called Ammunition. And I hope this has been helpful. I'm gonna re like I'm just gonna take you over to this art journal again. I hope this has been helpful. I'm gonna turn this this way. Don't know if that's better or worse to look at. Um, but yeah, you can screenshot this page if you'd really like to. Uh, for your own records, um, please don't share it anywhere else, but that's about it for today. That's talking about art vocabulary. Talking about art vocabulary, talking about maybe how you can critique art, maybe how you can talk about art, just, just, uh, with speaking about art, your friend's art, professional art. Just just getting more comfortable with talking about art and um, putting words to what you visually can see instantly. Um, if you can, you know, if you can visually see visual art pieces, um, yeah, sometimes it's helpful to know. Sometimes it's helpful to know how to talk about or how to put words to what you're seeing. Um, and that way, a lot of a lot more people can understand what you're talking about and a lot more people can relate to what you're saying instead of just saying oh you know like oh yeah this this that squiggle in the top left uh sometimes that can be descriptive enough but like sometimes you want to be a little bit more precise about how you're saying things like i mean there's not really a squiggle in the top left on this painting but i'm just trying to give an example right but if you just talked about like, oh, I like the texture of the paint um, in certain areas, like I, most people would be able to tell what exactly you're trying to say by that. And then if you go into more detail talking about like the location of what you're talking about on the painting, that can also help. Um, yeah, this has been art vocabulary, art critique, talking about art with Amanda Chow, apchowart.official. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching the replay if you're watching this on the replay.